morning, everyone. Welcome to session 23 on jazz and rock and roll horns. Uh, I just sent out an email uh, with all the details for the workshop coming up. Um, <clears throat> it's a, a ranger's uh, writing workshop. You'll be writing for uh, two horns and piano and bass, five horns, piano and bass, three horns and piano and bass, all done in two week increments. And then I have a couple new pages on my website. One is My Help, which I will be answering questions a few times a week whenever you guys have any problems or get stuck uh, with anything. Uh, and also there will be another page where I post the, vi the streaming. And I finally went and got streaming through Ustream. They have 24-7 uh, tech support. Uh, before I was trying to do it uh, through YouTube at no charge. You, Ustream charges a, a fee, but I'm more comfortable with that because I know I can get help and I've already had tech support with them and they're great. So I'm happy about that. Anyway, so let's talk a little bit about <clears throat> the first uh, lesson. Um, trumpet, tenor saxophone, keyboards, and bass. I thought about drums and I figured I think the main thing we're trying to do here is listen to the voicings and I was trying to keep the budget down um, as well. Uh, we could probably add that later, but for now that's what it, what it is. So what are you going to write? What I would do uh, is I would pick something out of the real book um, and I would write something that 32 bars, I would write an eight bar, eight bar intro, 32 bar uh, tune, you know, and then maybe eight bar outro and give or take a few bars. That's just a rough. If it comes in at 28 bars, it's no big deal. But I, you know, you need to write. And <clears throat> so when you write, and a lot of this I've covered in 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 the uh, uh, in the uh, in lesson uh, in session 32. Um, so what are you going to write? What I would do is I would plan this out. A lot of this stuff I can do, you know, just thinking with being away from the piano. So the 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 uh, the techniques that we have for for trumpet and tenor, we can write in prime unison. We can write in prime unison. We can write in octaves. We can write in thirds. We can write in sixes, sixth, however you want to say it. And we have counterpoint. And one of the lessons, you have to excuse my penmanship. <laughs> Uh, prime unison, octaves, third, sixes, counterpoint, no solos, okay? No solos, okay? Because the, the point is to try to practice these techniques. So what you could do is you could take uh, each section of the tune and do this. Let's say in the intro you do, uh, you do a thing with thirds, okay? Then when you come to the, to the, to the head of the tune, do it in prime unison. Do it in octaves. Um, maybe when you move to the to to the second ending, write something in six, or maybe write something in a counterpoint. Uh, I'm trying to remember what lesson that is where that I talk about counterpoint. It's either twelve or it's in there somewhere, um, where you have the trumpet taking the melody and then uh, the tenor saxophone playing a counter to that. And it's a very simple and fun way to do that. Um, also. Um, Try re-harmonizing, uh, if you will. Play around with your chord changes. Remember we talked about uh, strong and weak chords, and that's the first thing you want to do is get the right chords. The first thing that you want to do is make sure the chords are what you want, okay? Now, you can tweak the chords and re-harmonize the chords if you want, but that's really what, you, what you're trying to do. Then when you're copying the parts... And I know a lot of you know this already, but I'm talking for people that may not know this. Um, don't forget that your trumpet is up a whole step uh, and that your sax is up a ninth, meaning a whole step and an octave. So basically, if you, if you when the trumpet and the tenor saxophone are looking at the same notes, they're already in octaves, okay? Um, so what I want you to do is I want you to copy, try and keep, when you're copying your parts, 
And again, I'm going to set up, uh, there's a page on my website that's going to be my help where you can send me emails and then I will verbally uh, record the answers because I think I can do a better job. And then you just go to that website and listen for your name and your email or I'll write it out so you can go. Uh, and everybody can learn from everybody else's questions too. That's the cool thing about a workshop. Everybody learns from everybody else. Um, so th the other trick to to uh, to when you're transposing your score, if 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 you're in C concert, your and your trumpet is up a whole step, your side your key signature is going to be D major, right? So that'll take care of a lot of the accidentals. If in your if in your concert score you have an accidental, um, let's say you're writing in C and there's somewhere there's an E flat, you're going to have an accidental in your transpose too. So keep that so keep that in mind when you when you're writing it. Um, also, when I when I when when writing it out, try to keep for each stave. Don't give me odd uh, spots. Um, where a new section of the tune starts in the middle of the page, you got double bars in the middle of the page. I know you see that all the time and people like to do that, but it's better that I would rather see you start each new section at the left side of the, of the left margin, okay? Um, let me think now. Um, also, what you're gonna send me is, uh, you're going to email me the PDFs. You're going to copy your parts. You're going to send me a PDF of those. Hopefully you can do them on a Finale. I have an $80, $90 version of Finale that works that works great. You just got to watch when you extract parts. You got to tweak it. Sometimes it'll leave out bars. Sometimes the bars won't look right. You have to reorganize a little bit. But it's $90. There's that. There might be a download of Sibelius or Finale for free. If you all have to copy by hand, that's fine, but try to be very clear. So what I want you to send me is, let's say we have, uh, I want you to send me a two stave or three stave. If there's a specific keyboard part, okay, keyboard bass, you know, you can write, here's your trumpet part. Okay, so this is the concert score, and I want to see it in concert, and I want chord changes above. So when we see a stack of notes, and, and uh, you're getting your part played and we see a problem or something that's great, we can analyze it quickly. I'm not looking at a transcode. I mean, I could do that, but just, I think it's better for learning that to write a, 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 a two or three stave in concert, okay? So here we'd write our trumpet parts in concert. We'd write our tenor part. If the tenor part gets too low, it's gonna be down in the bass clef. Here's our, let's say we have our bass clef. Um, and we can write our, our changes down here, you know, that kind of stuff. You know, with hash marks, if they're anticipating the bar, you know, give me that. If there's specific notes, write those in, okay? And we could talk more about, I want to talk more about writing the rhythm parts because you want to give rhythm players just enough of what they need without giving them more than what. Don't give them a lot of, if, if there's a specific line they need to play, write that out. But if the rest just comping changes, write the comps out. If they're playing a two, a dotted quarter, half, you know, vibe or pattern, then, you know, write one and two and four, you know, write that. So bop, chick, bang, nose, okay? Then two, three, four, and, and, you know, that kind of thing. But you don't have to write them, you know, don't write them stacks. Uh, try to keep it simple. The main thing we're going for is what are the horn players playing? What, what, how are they voicing? What's happening with them? You can write the piano player can play with the horns if you want. Uh, maybe a third part. Um, there's different things you can do like that. So, but try to. So I want to see at least give me a three stave uh, piano uh, trumpet. The, the top two staves, the treble and the bass clef for the horns. You can write the tenor clef up here in the treble clef if he's not down too low. Let's say they're playing in octaves. You know, you can write them both up here if you want. If the tenor gets too low, you have your bass clef to do that with. So they, they can, you know, be like this. And then you got your bass and your keyboard on one staff if you want. Um, if the keyboard player is just copying changes with the bass player is just playing specific groove. Also write on your part 
what it is. Is it bossa nova? Is it rock and roll? What's the feel? Sometimes what you want, you can do, you can write the feel. This, let's say the bass player is playing. Write it down in the first two bars and then, then write hash marks or repeat in the second. And we'll know that basically that's the feel if you write a two bar pattern. So that's it for now. Um, let me know. August 1st is the deadline for needing to know. I had to, um, I can take payments uh, for the workshop. You can pay me all at once or I can take payments. I worked out a payment plan that which also cost me a little bit of a fee. You know, all this stuff adds up. But I think it's going to be a lot of fun and I think you will learn from it. And I think we could, we could uh, grow from this and uh, add other things. There's all kinds of all kinds of possibilities. So, uh, hope you join in on all the fun and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks for stopping by.